sponsored by Dennis J. Courtney, M.D., director of the Courtney Medical Group, located at 3075 Washington Road in McMurray, Pennsylvania. For more information or to make an appointment, call 724-942-3002. That's 724-942-3002 for Dennis J. Courtney, M.D. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to AIM Impact on Your Health. AIM Impact on Your Health, where every day our goal is to have you learn at least one thing to help you live better and longer. AIM Impact on Your Health is heard each and every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday from 8 to 9 o'clock. I'm Dr. Dennis Courtney, and I'm with you each and every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday from 8 to 9. AIM Impact on Your Health, where each day you'll find current medical news, knowledgeable guests, fascinating health topics, and of course, where we do encourage you to call in to join in today. Well, it's been a while since we've opened them up to you. I'm uh, going to do that today, allowing you at any time to give us a call and set the agenda, maybe clear some things up that uh, have developed over these many weeks, because it's been a number of weeks since we've allowed you to come on and just uh, take over the show. I've got a couple things that caught my ear and... Uh, my fancy, and I'm going to bring them to you. I think they're pertinent to what has gone on in the last few weeks uh, with the guests we've had. So in the course of today's show, uh, at any time, if you want to give us a knock and come on in the store, the number to do that will be 412-825-6262. That's 412-825-6262. We'll be bringing uh, Jerry Singleton on board here about half past the hour. Uh, tomorrow is the festivities. We'll be talking a little bit about that uh, here with the MCG testing. Uh, looking at the calendar as uh, it moves uh, quickly along here in the month of April. Um, uh, yes, tomorrow, well, we're starting off talking about with tomorrow's events. We've been uh, preparing for uh, about, about three weeks now, uh, allowing for the next, which has now become the fourth uh, testing seminar for the use of the uh, MCG device. This is, of course, uh, a device that tests the status of your heart and coronary arteries in such a way that it reveals the information of, of a cardiac cath without having that cardiac cath. Uh, this uh, testing now has um, really helped us as you're in with a couple patients, caught them by surprise. I think it's really a benefit, too, whenever... Um, uh, very healthy patients here, very walk-to-walk, talk-to-talk kind of individuals, um, had their uh, rather well-progressed cardiovascular disease uh, uh, unearthed and exposed. And although it was a little bit of a shock to us all, how great it was to be able to start putting into play a plan much more aggressively than I think they would have heretofore. And, of course, we find uh, those uh, who uh, just had never... Uh, even thought of uh, their health issues come in and, and have an opportunity to be tested and learn something about their own health status that uh, that they really were uh, helpful and uh, thankful, I guess is a better word, very thankful to be able to uh, participate in a way to correct those too. So uh, MCG testing will take place tomorrow. More about that with Jerry. Uh, about half past hour, we're going to bring Jerry Singleton back. A few words on that subject today. Uh, and, uh, well, we wait for them to hit him then. The uh, special guest then on Monday uh, is going to be, where is her bio now? He's going to be uh, Ricky Pippen. Now, Ricky is also the featured speaker up at the Freedom of Choice and Cancer Therapy Group that's going to be held uh, at the Days Inn. It's really out of sequence. you got to get this one right. They're going to be at the Days Inn this Wednesday evening. So, um, Ricky Pippen is the featured speaker there. The day is changed. It's Wednesday evening, not third Thursday. Um, it's going to be here on uh, fourth Wednesday. Uh, same place, the uh, Days Inn, just south of Butler there, as it has always been. However, the um, um, uh, time being changed as it is, you make the note, Ricky Pippen, uh, uh, offers yourself up as an author of a book that's gaining quite a bit of prominence where in her own particular case uh, with a afflicted child 
severely injured. Doesn't even tell me, the buyer didn't tell me what the uh, uh, baseline set of problems was in the child, but uh, the point that was being made in the literature that I read was that uh, conventional medicine had given up and said nothing can be done. And uh, she wouldn't have of it. She wouldn't hear of it. She uh, then said about correcting the problem on her own. And if I didn't read this correctly, she went and corrected that problem without the help of the conventional doctors. Anyway, uh, Ricky Pippen is going to be the featured speaker up at the Freedom of Choice and Cancer Therapy Group. Remember, this month it's going to be on Wednesday night, not uh, tomorrow night, as you would think, Wednesday, next Wednesday night. Uh, and we're going to have her on the show here on Monday. On Wednesday here on the show, uh, we're going to have Brian Fultz come aboard with us. Now, Brian uh, is a representative of a company that we've come to respect quite a bit. There, there are a few great companies out there. This is one of them, uh, Standard Process. Everybody uh, is uh, pretty much in the, in, the, in the know with respect to Standard Process and the fact that it is a top-notch group. Anyway, Brian's going to be here talking about thyroid issues and the supplementation that you can be using with respect to thyroid, uh, some quite unique supplementation only really offered by the standard process, especially this category of, uh, of substances called protomorphogens. We'll get into that uh, with Brian on the 27th. Then, uh, looking into the month of May, oh, who could look into this month of May without... Uh, seeing what I'm looking forward to, which is in the second week of May, we're going to have the eye treatment seminars, as well as the general seminar here, when Dr. Ed Kondrat brings the whole dog and pony show to Western Pennsylvania once again. Now, Dr. Ed Kondrat is a board-certified ophthalmologist. You may have remembered him when his practice was in Mount Lebanon, uh, as uh, he is a Pittsburgher, born and raised. Uh, but after um, many years of practice here, he picked up his entire show and moved it to Phoenix, Arizona. Yet, even though he's, uh, I guess, stationed in Phoenix, he travels all over the country with his unique treatment approaches to eye disorders uh, in, uh, in an alternative fashion. He is a homeopathic ophthalmologist. I don't even know how that's possible, but he certainly gets great results. And he comes around uh, to various towns. He frequently now comes to Pittsburgh offering treatment seminars, people with eye afflictions, of which uh, obviously there are many. Uh, we've had a few actually call us up during our programs here, and you could tell by listening to their particular personal situations that they were in an untenable situation, that they were seeking the only conventional therapy that's available to them in uh, our area, and they just weren't progressing. You could tell by listening to their story that they hit the wall, that they weren't moving in the positive direction anymore, and uh, they were searching, literally searching for the potential to see if there's a way to get uh, things turned around. I think if you heard one thing come out of the lips of Dr. Ed Condra, it's whenever someone has said, and it sort of gets my dander up too, that nothing can be done that's the case that uh, we, we both expect to, to plow into and make sure things do get done. They do get improved. And I've seen this happen in the seminars that he has brought here before. Literally in two days, these people are starting to show improvements in their vision. And uh, it's nice to be able to see that. Anyway, Dr. Ed Condrat coming to town. He'll be here now uh, for two different seminars. There's going to be a general seminar, which he usually has the day preceding, but this particular time around, that won't be that way. Why? Well, the Sunday, normally the day where he, where he held those things, uh, is Mother's Day. And so we've moved the general treatment seminar, the general um, information seminar, better said, to uh, Monday, May 9th, in my office, 6 to 8 o'clock. That's the same day that the treatment seminar commences on the 9th, and last for three days, 9, 10, and 11 in May. Uh, the numbers of individuals, uh, I think we're getting close to the 10 mark now. If nobody likes to cut it off at 10 patients, um, we'll be here and actively receiving treatment, all forms of treatment. I'll be participating in that treatment here in the office. Uh, there are various IV infusions that we're going to be using while 
Uh, Dr. Ed does much of the ophthalmological, not all the ophthalmological workups, and it works out very well uh, for the patient to benefit from from both of our efforts when they come to town. So uh, if there's anyone out there listening that wants some more information on either of those seminars, I got a couple emails just yesterday, people uh, actually saying they were going to be coming to Pittsburgh uh, for the eye treatment seminar. They had some questions about the schedule uh, and things like that. If you do have questions of that nature, uh, it's a Dr. Ed Kondrad schedule. Um, I've got a general outline in mind of how things are going to go each and every one of those days, but he's on a razor thin schedule that uh, is pretty precise. All those questions can be directed to this uh, his office. Wait a while, wait till around noon our time. It's three hour difference between ours and theirs. 1 800 430 9328. That's 1 800 430 9328. And uh, you can either do one, reserve a seat in the general seminar, a couple hours in which you'll have a chance to ask question after question. And you can make it personal. You can talk about your particular eye condition. And maybe if you're not involved in this particular treatment seminar, you may be able to get an edge on making a decision about the next time he comes to town. And so you want to use an, uh, that opportunity to meet him and to meet myself. We'll I'll be also in attendance in that evening. And uh, make a decision that might be worth your while to uh, explore things very well before you actually jump in to the treatment seminar itself. Uh, and so the reserve a seat with that, that 800 number is applicable. If you already know you want to be treated and you want to reserve a treatment slot, the 800 number, once again, 1-800-430-9328 is operational. And uh, give it a call. Give them a call. But wait till around noon to do so. Uh, also in May, uh, on the 4th of May, Susan Smith-Jones comes back to talk about cleanses, the spring cleaning aspect detoxification, particularly talking about the skin. She said uh, she wanted to emphasize it, and so she'll be here on the 4th. And then uh, in keeping with um, um, uh, what I promised you, after last Friday having Dr. David Brownstein on the show, he's going to be coming back to discuss once again the many different uh, issues we never got to with respect to thyroid disease. So that's a pretty full plate. There'll be more added to it as the days clip by, and I'll sure let you know as they uh, as we add to our May list. Looks like April pretty much shot. Now, um, I don't know uh, did you if you recall the Monday show or not, but uh, it was a pretty interesting show. It was uh, the uh, first time, uh, and I'm pretty sure of this because I asked specifically whether Dr. Michael Kiriak had ever been on a radio show before, and uh, they said, no, he actually has been on some of those uh, scientific uh, over-the-internet broadcasts, but never on a radio show. And so I was really uh, uh, pleased to see that he was willing to come on board here and spend uh, uh, about a half hour with us on uh, on um, Monday's show uh, with Dr. Roland Thomas in the background. As uh, I said while I was doing the show, it sort of sounded like the United Nations. Uh, with uh, I got headphones on and I'm listening, and uh, I hear my question, and then pretty soon I hear my question, evidently phrased in French, so that the guest, Dr. Michael Kiriak, could understand the question, and then he would come back in English. Anyway, the uh, first time that ever happened to me, that was interesting. Um, but uh, Dr. Michael Kiriak, I promise you, will be back. We talked off air. I think the uh, way we're going to handle it a little better. In some cases, Dr. Kiriak didn't understand my question too well. I could pick up on his answers. I hope you did. But let me know, by the way, how that went from your perspective, whether it was just uh, something that was just so far a broad uh, skew that you couldn't pick up on, or whether you actually did, uh, because I would like to bring the gentleman back. I'm just so uh, admiring of his uh, scientific acumen and his contribution to science that uh, uh, when I get a hold of these great great ones like this, I, I tend to try to get get some and bring them on the show so you can listen to them. If you can, if you are not getting anything out of it, let me know. 
and I won't uh, I won't put you through it. But uh, be it as it may, we're going to have him back in May, uh, and uh, and go over it again. One thing I did I will reveal to you that I don't think I had mentioned, uh, and it was uh, something that Roland told me. Dr. Roland Thomas, of course, uh, had been on our show many times before, and um, I had talked to him off air before we went on the air, and uh, he was telling me about watching a TV show on Sunday, I mean the day before we did the show, uh, on TBS. So evidently up there in Toronto, they get TBS just like we get it down here. And uh, it was a show on our space program. And uh, I remember the space program very well because I'm of the age that I can remember it very well. And many of you listeners may be of that same genre and generation. But um, what he said, and it resonated with me and made me feel even better about the interview, was that the parallel he drew between our commitment back in the uh, 1960s uh, into conquering space in such a way that we will land on the moon, so said JFK, uh, in that decade. And the entire country got behind that uh, in such a way that it was a mission we all felt we were on. And when we finally arrived at the moon, we felt like we had achieved the goals and objectives that we had set forth. And the entire country, and I emphasize again, was behind that space program. If you're of that age group, you know I'm right because I felt it and you had to fear it too. Well, the parallel he drew, which uh, emboldened me even more and made me feel really great about having Dr. Michael Kiriak here, is that he claimed that the Soviet government, in a similar way, and I don't only say similar because of the commitment, because the amount of dollars had to be considerably different. But according to Roland Thomas, and i got to get this question answered by Dr. Michael Kiriak, the Soviet government put the full force and faith of their entire governmental system at the time behind finding how to correct these animal disturbances that were going on and uh, put that kind of emphasis behind how they um, supported Dr. Michael Kiriak and his uh, proposals and ultimate uh, findings and uh, contributions in such a way that at least Roland said he saw the parallel. So if you're of the age that you can remember the space program, imagine that kind of support behind one guy, um, which wouldn't require the dollar amount of support, but if it could have a government support, a person with a mission even if it's one guy, in a similar way as a week up behind the entire space program, that would be a powerful and potent thing. And to have both things take place, we won one got to the moon, and I guess Dr. Kiriak won also. And uh, he didn't. He wasn't going to the moon. He was only going to other places in, in the Soviet Russia at the time. But nonetheless, I'd have to say he won also. We'll promise, I'll, I'll promise to bring him back. Uh, let me know. Love to hear how you... Uh, felt about the show and uh, whether you really benefited from it. I understood what the guy was saying. I hope you did. Ah, okay. Another item. Got to bring this one to your attention before it gets too cold. And this dates back um, to last Friday's show when we were with Dr. David Brownstein. And the topic of that day was his book, Overcoming Thyroid Disorders. And um, I should have known that we should have programmed from the get-go multiple shows over this topic. It's such an important medical topic uh, in my office. Just about all women who come in here ultimately end up, at least we're going to have a discussion about thyroid issues. And the vast majority, by far 90% of them, actually end up being treated for their thyroid anomalies. Now, with that kind of an emphasis, that I've seen in my office, uh, it was a little um, naive of me to think that we were going to cover this topic in one day. So we're going to get a few concepts covered. But one of the things that came out of nowhere, and when it hit me, it hit me in such a way that uh, I now come back to you today because I'm bringing it up again. I think it, it is, uh, it's a blemish on us all, certainly on, on me, to have to admit to the fact that 
I think we're shortchanging half of the population with respect to the emphasis on thyroid disease. If you can remember our discussion uh, with the, Dr. Brownstein, I had asked him, because in his book, very early on in the book, he talks about Rhoda Barnes. Uh, and Dr. Barnes uh, was an endocrinologist from up in uh, Connecticut, actually, and uh, had uh, written a number of books on the subject. He really is the quotable source when it comes to thyroid disorders. A gentleman that uh, just kept impeccable records and uh, made a number of contributions. He's since departed. But uh, one of the things that he did, and I didn't realize this until I read the book, is uh, he had done a study whereby he went over 70,000 autopsy records uh, to looking at the cause of death because there's an unusual rule, I, didn't, I wasn't aware of that, in the state of uh, Utah, I think it was Utah, um, yeah, there's a rule that it, whoever, whatever, whenever somebody dies, an autopsy must be performed on the individual. Oh, no, it's not Utah. It's in Graz, Austria. That's what it is. So um, any death in Graz, Austria will culminate in a full-blown autopsy to determine the cause of death. We don't have that here, and very few places do. But he could go back to records that are impeccably kept back in Austin, Graz, Austria, and was able to determine, with respect to looking at those records, that in the populations of before 1930 and uh, up until 1970, what the causes of death were. And essentially what was learned is that before 1930, the cause of death was usually an infectious cause of death. And this is pre-antibiotics, and consequently, being pre-antibiotic, uh, it would be understandable that infections could uh, end up extinguishing the lives of many individuals, and that certainly is what happened. But when antibiotics finally made it to the forefront and finally made it to the markets and finally made it into medicine, then the number of infectious deaths diminished drastically uh, and have evolved to where we stand today, in which, yes, people die of infections, but in number, very few compared to those of pre-1930. Um, but the work done by Broda Barnes brought forth a concept that I had never heard before. And that concept was the role that hypothyroidism plays in the development of coronary artery disease because according to Broda Barnes and looking at all these autopsy records, when he, they did autopsies on people who died earlier in their lives before 1930, but they were younger um, than uh, those that died later on because they were claimed early due to those infections, there were various signs that there was cardiovascular disease well advanced in, in most, if not all, of those patients. And, of course, those autopsies done between 1930 and 1970, uh, the patients had lived longer. They didn't die of infectious causes. They ended up actually dying of cardiovascular causes. But the connection, and this is the point that resonated with me on Friday, and the point that I bring to you today is that there is a strong link. So said Broda Barnes, and with this uh, study, it apparently has been uh, pushed back on the bookshelf. I'm telling you, I didn't, I'm not, I was not aware of this strong connection that he makes in the book, and it has caused me to literally ponder, sit back and ponder how I even conduct my own practice. And I'm going to tell you, I've been shortchanging half the people who walk in here. Women have uh, such affliction of thyroid disease that they've got symptom after symptom after symptom, and the men don't usually have any of those symptoms. But now we're going to start to uh, take a look at this from a completely different perspective. The basal body temperatures, which we ask all our women to do, and only very few of the men, I'm going to tell you, is going to change around here. There's a new sheriff in Dodge, and actually it's Broda Barnes and David Brownstein. They bring, uh, they compel me. 
to make certain that thyroid disease is not going to be ignored. And I have to admit, I think it absolutely has. And I have to claim that in my, in, and it's been ignored by me with respect to the role that it plays in male disease and as well, uh, well, female disease, no. That's gotten by me, folks. But it's, that in terms of the cardiovascular component, that's what's eluded me. And I haven't emphasized it in either population, but certainly haven't begun to even delve into the treatment of the um, male population in anywhere near the numbers that I have in the female population. So men who are, if you're listening to me right now and you're one of my patients, you're going to be hearing from me. We're going to get basal body temperatures on you, and we're going to find out your, your status. And I promise to report back to you, the listener, to let you know uh, the, uh, what, what the status of our male population is. I absolutely uh, I'm floored to think that I may be missing something that is extremely important in their cardiovascular status. And this is an area that I feel that we have excelled in for many, many years. So bear with me. Hope you accept my apologies. My atonement is real. Uh, but I promise you I will report back once I have uh, achieved a lot of uh, input from my patients with respect to basal body temperatures. Their only real way of diagnosing uh, thyroid disease, of course, if you, if you haven't got the picture already, the blood testing certainly isn't the way to do it. Okay, now said, by the way, I'll bring this up once again uh, with Dr. David Brownsing when he returns with us in, uh, well, that's going to be on May uh, 13th. May 13th, he'll be back with us. Okay, let's do this. Let's take a short break. In the interim, I'm going to go find him, folks. Jerry Singleton is certainly going to be in my office tomorrow. Let's uh, find out some last-minute things from him. You may want to check in uh, with us also just by giving us a call at 412-825-6262. You can talk about cardiovascular disease, thyroid disease. Uh, and also interested here what you thought about our show on Monday with the Ruskies. Anyway, be back in a moment with Jerry. Become confused about how best to manage your health. It's no wonder. It seems that every time you turn on the television or radio, another expert has yet another suggestion for you to follow that seems to be reasonable enough, but no matter how dutifully you follow the instruction, it just doesn't quite produce the results that you are looking for. If this confusion sounds familiar to you, give us a call at the Center for Complementary Health, where we'll make some sense of the confusion based on a blending of traditional and alternative medicine that we've been perfecting over the last seven years. We offer metabolic nutrition testing, immune system repair, natural hormone replacement therapy, chelation therapy, cutting edge allergy correction, and a host of other safe and effective well, therapies. Dennis J. Courtney, MD, is located uh, at 3775 Washington Road in McMurray. Phone 724 943 Honey, just got the word. The company's new health plan has a $5,000 deductible. We have to make sure nobody gets this year. Okay, Remember all those doctors that it's cost for last year's cold and flu? Oh, sorry. sorry, I've got to go. Love you. We can do this. We can cut the fast food lunches, soda. That's a lot of sugar. We could all take that evening walk. And hey, I heard a program about fruit. Fruit of the Spirit. What did they say? One ounce is the equivalent of five servings of fruits with herbs and minerals. We could add some to our breakfast protein shake. Fruit of the Spirit is unique whole fruit puree. Fruit of the Spirit contains fresh fruits native to the Holy Land and alkalizing minerals from the Dead Sea. With no added sugar, Fruit of the Spirit is a unique product from five years of work with science-based nutritional experts. Call 1-800-442-3793 for a special promotional offer. Fruit of the Spirit, a blessing for your good health. Fruit of the Spirit, convenient, affordable, and delicious. At 1-800-442-3793. Call them now. 1-800-442-3793. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back once again to AIM Impact on Your Health. Heard here on KHB 620 each and every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday from 8 to 9 o'clock. I'm Dr. Dennis Courtney with you on this Wednesday version of the show. And uh, we've opened it up and allow you, by the way, to give us a call on any matter at all. 
612-825-6262 is a number to do that. That's 412-825-6262. I thought that uh, because, well, tomorrow's a special day around here. You've been hearing us talk about these tre- these um, testing uh, seminars that we do, testing days, uh, using a device brought to us by the gentleman who's uh, also been on my show many times. Uh, the gentleman who represents a company, the company that the only one that actually distributes uh, the device uh, known as MCG. That stands for multifunctional cardiograms, and you all should be experts on it now. You have responded, folks. You have filled up the schedule. There might be, there might be one or two slots left. If you think you'd like to be a part of this round of testing, don't forget you can give us a call in our office here right after we get off air today because at 9 o'clock we'll open up and uh, Kim can answer your, your, your phone call and get you scheduled. But tomorrow's a big day around here. Let's bring Mr. Jerry Singleton aboard with us and say good morning. Welcome back, Jerry. Hey, Dr. Courtney, how are you? I'm doing good, Jerry. You uh, Are you in tip-top shape? Are you ready for a full day tomorrow? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I really do think that you're going to hit your record. Your record up to this point is 28 patients in one day. I swear we're going to hit 32 easy tomorrow. And then are we scheduled full? We are scheduled full. There may be a slot or two, but I, I promise you, if I'm going to jump on that table, we're going to do it. Okay? I, I want you to do 32 people tomorrow. Um, through the use of uh, the device that you have now made famous, well, we've made famous uh, because it's just making its way here, Jerry. There, there aren't many folks in the western Pennsylvania area who've had the opportunity so far. I think, you know, five years from now, this is going to be as common as, a, as an EKG. It sort of looks like an EKG. Why don't you uh, take a moment and fill us in on what an MCG is and what it does? The, uh, the multifunction cardiogram MCT, as we described it, is a five-lead resting test, uh, which does, in a way, uh, utilize uh, you know very similar approach to, to the way EKG collects data, uh, or you know another technology that, that, that utilizes tracing uh, as a component of their technology. Um, and uh, this, this machine, we collect uh, measurements from the patient in a five to six minute. Uh, time span. We we're collecting five 82-second measurements from, from the patient from those five lead sources. Uh, once we have that, uh, we then we, we send it off for analysis. Uh, we we're, a- we're able to get a report back uh, on that patient relative to coronary disease, what's there, uh, where they stand with regards to ischemia or inadequacies in that coronary blood flow. Uh, that is often a factor with atherosclerotic buildup, that plaque buildup that we've all seen commercials on uh, on TV, uh, and uh, we've all sure we all we've all had a family member or a friend out there that's, that's probably battled uh, battled some issues uh, relating to that. This, it is the number one cause of death in the United States, uh, and, and for most patients, there's there's either limited or no symptoms. So uh, really, it's it's a significant uh, concern out there. The fact that uh, patients out there do, aren't even aware typically that they have coronary uh, because or until they have their first heart attack or a stroke or you know, require bypass surgery or extent, um, you know, they're, they're typically not even aware of it. So uh, this gives us the ability to be very proactive for patients out there that uh, given the fact that this is uh, the, the number one cause of death in the United States and is the number one reason for emergency room visits, uh, it allows us to be very proactive in testing patients um, that have certain risk factors or uh, in, in determining, you know, where they stand with regards to some of this. And, and so that's, that's kind of the overall makeup of, of MCC. Well, you know, when it comes to um, the cardiovascular cascade, it happens in very slow steps. And um, I guess uh, the the first step that probably... Uh, doesn't raise a brow on anybody, anybody which is uh, the uh, the initiation of high blood pressure. I mean, when something like that begins, nobody's panicking. A lot of folks have high blood pressure issues, but the fact that um, the the processes that lead to requiring the use of blood pressure medicines are the very processes that are detected by the use of the MCG 
And in the specific set of blood vessels that count a lot, which are the coronary blood vessels, all the more reason to make MCG uh, a device that I think has got to absolutely champion the day here now that electronics has come around and is able to do, and I always put it this way, I'm going to do it again, uh, is able to, the MCG device is able to give us similar, if not exactly the same information that one would get from a full-blown cardiac catheterization without ever having a cardiac catheterization. I've always asked you to confirm that phrase. I'm going to ask you to do it again. Is that an accurate way to describe this test? Absolutely. Uh, we've, we've always been benchmarked uh, against angiography or a heart cath, and uh, certainly we've always come uh, within about 90% accuracy of, of detecting uh, coronary disease or ischemic uh, severity with regards to that, that those coronary arteries, uh, severity with regards to that, uh, within about 90%, which is phenomenal for any piece of medical equipment or, or testing out there. A lot of patients uh, aren't, aren't familiar with just how, uh, what the range of accuracy is on a lot of tests that, they ha that they've had or, or, ha or, or uh, are aware of. Um, and, and our test ranks at, at one of the, the, the highest levels of, of accuracy uh, out there. So, absolutely. All right. Well, that's, I keep, because uh, I think I put that together, I, it, it just explains so well to in my own mind. And, when patients hear that, it certainly clear rings a bell with them because I'll tell you what, that one thing they never want to have to have, and I don't ever want them to have to have it, is a cardiac cath. And but to be able to get that information without having to pay a severe price to be able to get it as comes along with having such uh, invasive studies as catheterization, uh, to find out that you can get that information without ever having to be put in that position, uh, people are intrigued by that. Uh, it may be a little scary one way because, you know, you're going to get be made aware of this, of your situation in, in very blunt terms, and it's a good thing. No matter how you cut it, whether it catches you by surprise or whether you've anticipated that you might have quite a bit of a, a plaque in the coronaries, you're going to know exactly where you stand when it comes to this test, and uh, that, that's a good thing. Now, Jerry, we have somebody knocking on the door. Why don't we let them in the store? Sure. Uh, and find out what's on their mind. Come on, go right ahead. You're with Jerry. Hey, oh. um, yes. I've been listening the last couple weeks, and I guess I should know this um, from when you had Jerry on before, but how does the MCG differ um, from the acoustic cardiogram that, you know, Jim Marisic had? Ah. And I wanted to know if you can mention how much um, the procedure is, because I'm definitely interested because of my, you know, cardiovascular problems. Um, how much is it, and would it be covered underneath, um, like, insurance? Oh, well, let's take the second part of that first. Jerry, you want to be nice enough to tell her about how this thing can be covered? Because uh, I'm really pleased to say that uh, it's almost all insurance cover. Almost every insurance covers this thing. Absolutely. We, we have phenomenal uh, coverage, reimbursement coverage with this. Um, and, uh, you know, it's covered by Medicare and Blue Cross, uh, you know, most, most all the big plans, a lot of the smaller plans as well, even uh, some Medicaid products out there like Unison or United Community Plan. So, you know, really it spans, um, you know, just about every, you know, just, just about every coverage type out there. Um, and, and part of the reason for that uh, is because it, it has been evaluated. Uh, by by us by the, the medical community out there, we've we've been around. Um, there's, there's a lot of medical journals and publications out there, so we've really been kind of tried and tested uh, per se, and that's part of the reason we have such phenomenal reimbursement. Okay, and uh, with respect, I better take this first part of the question. I don't know. I'm not so sure you're familiar with acoustic cardiogram. Are you, Jerry? You've ever heard of it before? No. What, what is that, Doctor? <laughs> All right. Well. I, let's just say that I'm quite familiar with it, and uh, I can appreciate the, the question, and uh, I'll be able to answer it. Um, Jim Moresic, by the way, for your information, Jerry, is a representative of a company called Standard Process. It's a company that uh, really produces, manufactures supplements, and some pretty high-quality ones, as a matter of fact. But um, Royal Lee, the guy who literally discovered the company, um, is a guy that also put together a test utilizing heart sounds. Uh, in fact, he was able to graphically 
represent heart sounds um, by placing a certain probe right over the heart that could pick up the sounds and then display it in sort of squiggly lines, okay, with whatever the sounds that this heart was putting out. Now, the intention of the acoustic cardiogram was to determine um, uh, vitamin and mineral deficiencies. So that by, by doing this acoustic cardiogram, Jim Moresic could tell you what vitamins and minerals you were lacking, then come back, and then put you on those supplements, and then come back uh, three or four months later and see that these uh, supplements had actually corrected the anomaly. Now, that's quite different than the MCG, who has, has no intention of diagnosing where you might stand with respect to supplementation, but gives you all the information with respect to the status of the coronary arteries and heart itself, which is what the acoustic cardiogram never intended to do. So they have different intentions from the get-go, each of which unique unto itself, uh, but quite opposite poles of, of extremes with respect to the information you can get from it. I hope you understand my explanation. Oh, she's, are you still there? Because she must have hung up. Yeah, okay. Yeah, that, that makes a lot of sense to me, but in case the patient's still listening on the radio, uh, absolutely. The uh, what, what this is, is, a, is able to do for us, and there's a number of. Uh, I, I get asked all the time, you know, the differences between this and what's the difference between this and an EKG, and uh, maybe a stress test. And, you know, there, there's a number of different cardiac conditions one can have out there, and it can be somewhat simplistic. Um, you know, patients can have electrical, you know, an electrical malfunction of, of the heart, arrhythmia, as we would put it, uh, where, where they possibly would need a pacemaker or a defibrillator. They might have a valve uh, condition. Maybe there's some regurgitation of one of the valves that, that uh, you know, are very important in, in keeping uh, when, when the heart goes through the, the contraction stages um, uh, of pumping blood. Um, and and the, uh, the, there's, there's a few other out there, but the, 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 those, the kind of the big three are, are those two, and, and then finally coronary-related conditions, I, I find, uh, which have, in one way or another relate to uh, the plaque development of, uh, in the arteries, the coronary arteries specifically, which seem to be so prone um, to, uh, to, to that. And, and really the, the variables that, that take play uh, w with that um, make coronary coronary disease, the, the number one uh, cause of death in the United States, certainly more prominent than, than the, the latter two cardiac conditions we, we talked about. And there are other conditions that, that individuals can have out there, but you know, this is really the most prevalent uh, in, in our, in our tri-county area here. We have some of the highest concentrations, there, there's a few counties in Florida that have higher concentrations of coronary disease than we do. Uh, but it really is a very, very serious disease. It affects all ages. Um, it, it's not something that, that just affects you late in life. There's, uh, you know, there, there's, there's been a lot of young people that I'm, I know we've all heard about that have, that have, that have uh, fallen over on the, you know, the, the soccer field or the sports field or what, whatnot, and uh, you know, they, they have a heart attack or they have, you know, and, and we see that a lot. And, uh, you know, more and more we hear stories of things like that. And really, uh, they've done studies to show that that buildup, that plaque buildup, can even start as early as birth um, for, for patients that have very genetic, uh, are very genetically disposed uh, uh, to, 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 to having coronary disease. Maybe they, they have a, there's a genetic component in their, in their family that has, has made them, um, you know, more susceptible to, to developing coronary disease than others. And uh, for, that, for that reason and the fact that, that symptoms are, are often, um, you know, very mild or, or, or not at all, and we would consider that to be an asymptomatic patient, uh, you know, it's very, very important to know, uh, to have the ability to know where one stands relative to, to that condition. Now, this test is a, a six-minute test. Uh, you are fully clothed. You do expose the ankles. By the way, uh, let me ask you, oh, this is good. Those who are coming in tomorrow, and you know who you are, and uh, you're going to be tested, uh, did, did, do you say that to wish you, you should wear nylon stockings are okay or they're not okay? You know what they kid, uh, I always try to, 
so I prefer to have patients where, you know, um, we're, we're able to get to their ankles very easily. But if they, a lot of times patients have knee-high stock, and a lot of females have knee-high stock. And if they mm -hmm. have, you know, the full-blown stockings where, you know, they, you know, where, where they're, they're not easily removable, that's okay. I, we, there is a, there is a little, uh, a little way around that. What I, I use is, uh, is, is some alcohol prep pads between the leaves, and it, it's able to conduct through um, that hose material. So. Uh, you know, it's not it's not a big deal. You know, if, if you're working and you, you know, you're not able to, you, maybe you're coming on a lunch break or something. You're one of those patients tomorrow. It's, it's not not necessary to to be overly concerned with with that that component of it. All right, so going to be in here top 15 minutes. I promise you, going to be in and out of here. Uh, you sort of get on an on deck circle, sort of like uh, watching baseball games, Jerry. We got the on deck circle where you're going to get a little bit of information from them. We're going to get a copy of your insurance card. We're going to give this to Jerry. He's going to get a little information for you outside of the testing room. While you're in that mode and sitting outside the room, we ask you to take your shoes and socks off. When you finally do enter the room, Jerry, everything is in a ready position and set to go. Then once hooked up to the leads, it truly is a six-minute undisturbed period of time where the patient lies tranquil, and uh, you're doing actually five tests every 82 seconds. You're doing a different test during that six minutes, and then it's over, and then you leave. One other thing I would say to you, be prepared, because I'll have Kim or myself working with you to come up with the time slot that you want to come back to discuss the results, because the test is one thing. By the end of the day, we'll have the results back literally starting tomorrow, or rather the day afterwards, Friday, We'll be able to consult with you in respect to your, with respect to your results. Now we do have another knock on the door. Come on, the store. Hello, you're with Jerry. Go right ahead. Is there anything you can do about the kidney deterioration? Well, is there anything we can do about it? The answer is you better believe it. It's just that this particular test, this MCG test, doesn't detect anything with reference to the kidney specifically. However, if you have significant cardiovascular disease, if you are a diabetic, and by the way, are you, I ask you, are you diabetic? No. Okay. But a kidney, kidney disease uh, with respect to how they deteriorate oftentimes deteriorate for the same reasons that, uh, that the coronaries uh, deteriorate, which is the accumulation of plaque with inside of them, and so you can extrapolate that the kidney, if the heart is loaded with plaque, the kidneys might very well be, but that's the only connection with respect to kidneys and this test. I think I'm pretty right about that, Jerry, wouldn't you say? Yeah, absolutely. The, the coronaries are really the, uh, seem to be very, very prone uh, to, to collecting, uh, you know, plaque deposits. But there's certainly when there's when there's one artery that uh, we see this with the, the multiple arteries that surround the, the heart uh, itself. Uh, when one artery uh, develops blockage, it, it, there's typically one or more arteries that play there. And, and I'd have to say that the same would be so with with other with, with various other arteries that surround our, our body um, as well. Okay, and just one emphasis because you asked, you started your question by saying, uh, can you do anything with kidneys? And so what I'm trying to tell you is I, when I hear that, I go, oh, my, sir, absolutely. Come on in. Make sure you come in to see me. I, I find that uh, so much of what we do, because it has virtual a cardiovascular benefit everywhere, ends up being extremely helpful for kidney disease and uh, brain disease and um, and, uh, uh, and prior s stroke uh, victims and breathing problems and you name it. So uh, I hope uh, that uh, you'll take me up on coming to see me. If not for this test alone, because it's a kidney information you're interested in, um, that's one thing. But I would say that you should be equally interested in your coronary status because I think they go hand in hand. All right, sir? Okay. Okay. Come on. In. All right. Another knock on the door, Jerry. Let's let him in. Come on, you're in the store. Go ahead. Hello? Hello. Hello, Dr. Tosmi? Yes, ma'am. How are you? I am well. Okay. I wanted to, I'm calling you from Healthy Life Sources. We sent you a newsletter. 
I don't know whether you got it or not. A newsletter from what what company? We sent you a newsletter and call you to Penalty Life Choices. Okay, I don't know if I have that newsletter. Could Is you pardon? Could you please resend it? I'm not so sure I've seen it. Okay, I sent you a it to here promoting like alternative health. We would like your input in that. Well, if you send me that letter and let me take a look at it, I'll contact you and I'll be happy to try to help in any way I can, whatever it is you'd like me to do. I'll be more than happy to. Please do send another for some reason. I'm not recalling this newsletter, and uh, I get a lot of these. Well, I tell you what, I, I get a number of uh, uh, things coming across my desk. It may be pushed aside. I don't recall it. Please send me another one, ma'am, all right? Okay. Okay. I'll be looking for it. I will, will. Let me see your newsletter. I'll be happy to contact you. Okay, thank you very much. All right, there you go. <laughs> All right, we're we're getting up here pretty close to the end of time. Um, Jerry, uh, the uh, the test. Uh, well, we mentioned with the insurances, that's very good. It's a six minute long test. Oh, the scoring, Jerry. Um, this does not come back with a score that compares to the way a cardiac cath score would be uh, graded. It uses a raw scoring system. Could you please explain how these results will eventually be reported? Absolutely. We're, we're collecting, uh, the, once we collect the measurements from the patient, uh, we utilize it in a sense to, to report a score from 0 to 20 relative to their coronary status, 0 being no detectable level of coronary disease, 20 being the opposite end of that spectrum. Um, and with that, we can evaluate everything from, you know, the medication you're on, if you're on blood pressure medication, cholesterol medication, uh, you know, your diet and exercise certainly have a, a, an effect on coronary blood flow. Uh, you know, a whole, a whole gamut of, of variables there that help us um, in, in really understanding the, those, the, the, the factors that influence one's risk factors for having coronary-related complications heart attack, stroke, you know, those, 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 those variables. Um, and then we, we can put a plan in place based upon that score, that 0 to 20 score, uh, and, and try to, at some point in time, retest you, uh, maybe a year down the road, maybe six months down the road, and you've been able to, to get some measurable improvement. Uh, certainly, I feel the benefit of your testing is to make someone aware of their status, then come up with a plan that then allows for future testing, Based on the uh, the scoring, which you're so apt to describe, somewhere between zero and twenty, literally, I, I, what'd you say? Zero and one. The number zero and one virtually means there's no disease at all here. Okay. Right, right. And then when. Nice and, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, and then when you get to scores of, uh, is it uh, two, three, and four, that you're allowed to do this testing? And so if you have zero or one for a score, you're allowed to repeat this test annually. Am I right about that? Exactly. Okay. And for, for the other scores that, that are slightly higher, like your your threes, your fours, your fives, you, we can test you a little bit more frequently, and really we should be because uh, if we start coronary disease is a progressive disease, um, and you might be a better fit for like a twice a year candidate, uh, you know, all depending on your medical circumstances, you know, give or take, and, and how often that you, Dr. Courtney, decide. Uh, but but with that. Uh, it, we, we need to kind of keep a closer eye on certain individuals that are at higher risk, um, even if they feel fine, you feel 100% okay, uh, because that's what patients will tell you. I see every day um, in different offices, they say, hey, I felt fine, and then I had a heart attack. You know, I, you know they're, they're blown away, and they, you know, and, until they understand the components that are at play there, uh, you know, they, they, they don't really, they kind of, you almost take it for granted. And so uh, this gives us a very preventative way with a high degree of accuracy to test you as a patient. We're going to get a report back on you uh, that Dr. Courtney, you'll go over with the patient. They can keep, keep a copy of the report for themselves if they'd like. If oh, yeah. 
a primary care physician. Say they have another physician that they that they see periodically as well. Uh, you know, you certainly can share that, um, and, and that can be included in your chart uh, with that physician office as well. Uh, we utilize this technology at a lot of primary care offices, a lot of cardiologist offices across Western PA, um, and so uh, absolutely, it's, it's an invaluable amount of information we can gather. Well, I think a, a, a powerful statement that comes in at this point is, after the scoring it was revealed, it is the insurer that will allow you to be able to get this test. Based on the severity of the disease that gets uncovered, to find out the insurer says, hey, you've got enough disease here. You need to be tested, let's say, once every three months. The insurer, for them to be able to cover this, financially cover this test, and the doctor monitoring you through, uh, through all these tests, says something about how they feel about the validity of this test. That says, yeah. It cost them a fortune. It cost $46,000 on average is what Highmark Medicare has shared with us uh, for every heart attack incident. And that doesn't even include the follow-up care um, you know, that, that, that typically goes down the, just down the line with that. So uh, what they really want us to see happen is, is atherosclerotic buildup is something that doesn't happen. When a patient has a heart attack one day, they didn't develop the plaque the day before. Uh, you know, they developed that plaque over years. Sure. So what the, what the, the intention is, is to, in the middle of that process, the very beginning and the middle, and, uh, to, to jump in and to, uh, to, to implement some, some goals to, 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 uh, to slow that down and, and possibly reverse it. Well, I, I never heard that. Every, every time you come on the show, Jerry, you throw something else on the, you just threw a cold number out there, Jerry, $47,000. One heart attack to the insurance company equals a payout of forty-seven thousand. They'll pay for this test <laughs> on infinitum. Hey Jerry, yeah. we got we got bongos, we got bongos in the background. Jerry, you rest up tonight. Be ready here tomorrow morning, folks. If you're coming here, we'll see you tomorrow. Until then, until Friday. This is Dr. Dennis Courtney with Jerry Singleton saying so long for AIM Impact on Your Health. Oh, yeah. For information or to make an appointment, call 724-942-9400.